Minister, I want to turn to our national economic recovery and the huge opportunity we have to involve our 241 credit unions with assets of over 40, uh, 18 billion euro in assisting with cash flow and credit facilities for our local small and medium sized businesses. Those who are the main employers in this country, particularly outside our cities. Fundamental to this is the need for statutory recognition by the central bank that credit unions are not-for-profit, community-based and volunteer-led organisations. The central bank seems to have forgotten the fact that many parts of rural Ireland, the credit union is the only open, accessible financial service in the community. Credit unions are not the same as banks, and they should not be treated the same by the regulator. But in fact, presently credit unions are being discriminated against. The Irish League of Credit Unions has sought the type of assistance and flexibility being provided to the mainstream banks by the central bank to help uh, them, uh, the credit unions, through the COVID-19 crisis. But to date, no flexibility has been shown to the credit union movement. Minister, the reality is that many of the customers that use credit unions uh, are not wanted by the big banks. If these families cannot get access to loans in times of financial pressure, then they are forced into the hands of loan sharks, and that's in nobody's interest. So, Minister, will you direct the central bank to deal equitably with the credit unions? And will you commit to amending the primary legislation in this area to clearly reflect the unique community nature of our credit union movement? Thank you, Deputy. I've had two meetings uh, over the last number of weeks with the uh, representatives and leaders of the different credit union movements here in Ireland, uh, which I have found very helpful. And I continue to have, I plan to have another one of those meetings actually in the coming week or so. And I have heard from them some of the concerns that you've raised, Deputy. As you'll appreciate, some of the issues that they're referring to are regulatory matters and they're not decisions that I am the decision maker in. They're decisions that are made by the Central Bank of Ireland. Uh, but I have passed on to the Central Bank some of the issues that have been raised. I know there's been further communication with the Central Bank, from the, from the Central Bank, with the credit union movement uh, since the last meeting that I had. And uh, I'm gonna meet the credit union movement again, have a discussion about where they stand and see where these different issues are. Uh, I cannot intervene in many of the issues that they are raising, but I do appreciate the really valuable role our credit unions are playing at the moment. And the fact is, as Deputy Nocton has said, and he's right in this, that they support uh, many citizens at the moment who otherwise would not be supported by our banks. Uh, and I value the work that they're doing, and I'm going to try to recognise that in the period ahead in terms of my engagement with them and if there are things that they can ask for that I can actually do, um, you know, looking at those requests carefully. Uh, Minister, can, can I thank you for, for your positive reply in relation to the role that the credit union movement uh, can play? Uh, but can I bring you back to the question I've asked regarding amending the, the primary legislation in this area? And the reason that I bring that to the floor of the House here, uh, Minister, is I believe there is a fundamental problem with the culture within the Irish Central Bank. Because when it comes to any type of draconian measure, it clearly the credit union movement is considered the same as big financial institutions in this country. However, when it comes to giving a break uh, to the financial institutions in this country, credit unions are treated very differently, as we are now seeing in practice in terms of COVID-19. So there is blatant discrimination on both sides in relation to the uh, credit union movement. And the Irish Central Bank needs to make up its mind here. I believe that the credit union movement needs to be treated uniquely. And the only way that that can happen is if that's clearly reflected in primary legislation, so that a different balanced approach is, term, is taken to the regulation of the credit union movement in this country. So, uh, 
Secretary, I'm not in a position to give the commitment that the Deputy wants in relation to changing primary legislation. I'll have to see what he is looking for first. I'm sure he'll share that with me. Uh, but I do believe the legislation that we have in place regarding how our credit union sector is regulated is very proportionate and fair. In terms of the comment that he's made about the culture of the central bank, I have to firmly disagree with him on that point. The Central Bank of Ireland do recognise the really valuable role that our credit union movement do play, do look to treat them in a way that is fair and different uh, from uh, the uh, established financial services here in Ireland. Uh, but I know there are issues uh, that need to be, uh, that are, are always being looked at between those who are regulated and the regulator. Uh, but in my experience of dealing with the Central Bank, uh, they do value the contribution that the credit union makes oh, to our country. Thank, thank, you. Last November, thank, thank you. Minister.